We just left uh, Agua Verde after the probably the worst night we've ever had at Anchor. Um, we did not get into the little cove on the north side. There's already five or six boats in there. And there's a catamaran that came in 30 seconds before us and they were like trolling it. So we just decided to anchor on the beach. Um, first night was good. And then last night, this, there wasn't really any wind, but the swell came in and uh, it was, it was actually all day long. It was from, we were facing the swell. And then last night we, the wind, cause there wasn't any wind or current. Maybe it was slack tide, I don't know. But we turned and we were sideways. Everybody was sideways to the swell and we were rocking way over. I mean, stuff was flying. Um, actually, Great Adventure left this morning too. They're ahead of us a couple miles. We only talked to them once, but they're very nice. They've got like a 75 foot yacht. It's pretty sweet. Um, they did not seem to be rocking last night, but they also have these big stabilizers. So maybe they had those out. It was pretty. Rich did a little diving. He uh, caught a big golden trevally. We did not eat it though last night. We had some other stuff. Maybe we'll eat that tonight. So today we were gonna go over to like Honeymoon Cove and just reading some of the reviews, you know, it's supposed to be awesome, but it's also supposed to be limited on what, who can anchor there. And a lot of it's stern anchoring as well. The swell is not supposed to be bad. It's supposed to kick up. The wind's supposed to get up to 15. So we are prepared for 30 because that's what happened to us last time. I just thought after bashing for four, potentially bashing for four hours, do we want to not find a place to anchor if it's full? and then have to to go around to Punta Colorado anyway, which is another hour and a half, two hours away. So we decided, let's just go to Punta Colorado. It's supposed to be good protection there from the swell and the wind. And it looks big. So we're for sure gonna get a spot there, I would say. Um, and then we can all, always do Honeymoon Cove later when it, the weather's maybe a little calmer and more predictable. Oh, I just saw a Mobulus Ray. I saw a Ray. They're jumping. I've given up giving and getting them on camera. They're, they're like impossible. I have, hour, I have just hours of footage of just see nothing going on because I see them and I try to film and then I never, I don't see them for like 15 minutes. So I've got 15 minute increments of just nothing. So I gave up. Just had a pot of dolphins out here. We dropped the hook like 15 minutes ago and the whole pot of dolphins came right in front of the boat. And they were just out here at this little reef. There's like a rocky reef right out here. Um, they're like slapping their tails and stuff. There's probably, how many, eight dolphins? At least eight. Yeah, about eight dolphins, I think. We came up here to, went to Colorado and it's really flat and nice. And there's one other boat here, a big catamaran, well not a big, it's a catamaran. And then there's some sort of campers over here on the beach. Kayak, camper. kayak campers. I'm not sure where they came from. They may have come from Escondido. I mean, I guess you could haul everything in your kayak. I don't know if you can see on this camera, but it's just, well, there's some chop out there for sure. And it's nice and calm in here. And there's supposed to be some good rock structure in here to dive. So Rich is gonna do that. I don't know when. Yeah, so pretty uneventful day. Rich made fish tacos on the way here. And we ate those already. What kind of fish? Golden Trevally Golden fish Trevally tacos. That he, yeah, he shot yesterday. So anyway, we're gonna put the dinghy in the water. I might put the riding sail up because we were swinging just a little bit. Might be nice to have that up. I'm glad to be somewhere flat. This is nice. I hope it stays flat. Hedge of angels come to corners with me. Riddle out every shadow you see. Ring a bell, shake a crawl. Give them hell, whatever the cost. Some and all love your rivalry. Say a word against the Indies and see. Sleeps tonight. 
Paint all your tigers gold. Paint all your tigers gold. And your lion heart sleeps tonight. Yeah, this is a trip. So two miles? Yeah, less than two miles. It was a 10-minute boat ride from uh, to Colorado. We left Agua Verde, which probably was decent fishing if I'd have spent a few days there. But uh, heading this way, didn't realize it. Loreto, this whole area with uh, Santa Catalina, um, Coronado Island, and Isla Carmen, and Dezante are all part of the Loreto Marine National Park. And you can hook and line fish. Um, you can commercially hook and line fish. You can recreationally fish hook and line, but you can't spear fish, which to me is stupid because it's the most selective form of fishing and generally the least consumptive. To me, it's just, it's, it's backwards, but whatever. We'll stay in Loretto. We'll stay on this island and check out a couple of the spots. Maybe go to Loretto and get some provisions and keep heading north. We've got, uh, yeah, we got some traveling to do before uh, our visas expire. So they'll be spear fishing. I'll just work on my breath hold technique and not be encumbered by gear. Maybe take a camera with me instead of a gun. Boo. Well, we've still got some fish in the freezer. <laughs> I've heard rumors that Isla Carmen is like, I don't know if it's a private island, but um, I don't know. I see signs. We saw signs in a little cove over here that uh, I'm presuming were no, per no trespassing signs. This coastline is neat. So rugged. Yeah, the water's so blue. It's really clear. Crystalline. Oh, look at all the fish. Totally. Yeah, we're not going into this one. There's not really any in to no. it anyway. Some cool tide pools over here. Yeah. Oh yeah, crabs all over. size of a pinata. Yeah. That is a big puffer. That is big. Poor little guy. We just left uh, Punta, Colorado. Right back there, you can see there's a catamaran still there. There's one left. He was the last one to come in. He's still there. I had a very peaceful night last night. So quiet, still. It's like not a lick of wind, but it wasn't hot, which is nice. And our destination today is, I believe, right on that side of the furler is where we're going, I think. It's uh, Bahia Salina? Just, just like glass out here today. Good and bad. No wind, but no waves and swell. Rich made a new uh, dinghy towing bridle. And I think what he's gonna do is add a middle piece to it to kind of keep the nose of it down a little bit more. It's kind of sitting high. But it seems to be working. I think it can be back a little farther. So we're all in our places. Rich is eating down below already and making water. Twitchell's in her spot in the shade. Let me tell you, we got to get more shade back here in the cockpit because she is adverse to the sun. She hates being in the sun. 
Um, yesterday, we did, our solar yesterday was so good. I think we were down maybe 100 amp hours and we, were, we made it all back by evening, which is nice. And then this morning we were down like 80 amp hours after cooking and TV watching and all that stuff. So should be a pretty uneventful day. I think it's about two hours to get up here. We will be motoring. I got a text from an ex coworker of mine. They were at a conference that, that we go to every other year. So I guess that was this last week. I must say, I don't miss it. I did not have FOMO about going to a work conference, even though they're usually pretty fun. Nope, rather be here. Looks like you've been missing a lot of work lately. I wouldn't say I've been missing it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Oh, that's terrific, Peter. What is that? It doesn't look like dolphins. Some sort of a boil. Dude, oh, that's yeah. fish. It's a boil. What do you do? What do you do? Let's go see about this shipwreck. Oh, here we go. Whoa. Careful. Oh my god, you're gonna hit it. You're gonna hit it. You're gonna hit it. There it is. Careful, don't put that rope in your prop. Yeah. Yeah, here it is. Here it is again. Don't hit it. making a, a temporary shade tarp for the cockpit. That's it. <laughs> um, we bought this stuff in La Paz, right? Yeah. Uh, but the stuff in, in La Paz, it's not as good as the gray stuff that I have for the front shade tarp that I made a while ago. I think I did a video on that. So anyway, we got this stuff. It's probably 75 to 85% shade, I think. Anyway, um, so we just spent the last hour trying to measure, figure out how we're going to do it because the cockpit is such a weird shape and we don't have anything to attach it to. But between now and when we get maybe some sort of permanent structure, either an arch or a dodger, I mean, or a bimini, um, you know, it's going to be hot. So we already don't hang out in the cockpit a lot because it's too sunny or we hang towels down, but then you're like squished up next to the bulkhead. So anyway, we had something similar to this in, um, at the Marina up in Al Harbor, but it was really heavy material and it didn't hang very well. And then I had a crap ton more of that gray stuff that I didn't realize was as good as it was. Um, but I sold it cause it was just a ton of material I didn't need. I think I got it in sale right for clearance. It was like super cheap, but anyway, they don't sell it anymore. And this is all they had at the Ace Hardware. You can see it's pretty thin. So the first part I'm doing is just, um, I'm just gonna, I have a bunch of this flag tape still. So I'm gonna put it along, no, I'm gonna put it along the, the forward edge. And then we're gonna figure out how to attach it to the Dodger railing on the back. And this is only for when we're anchored, obviously. I mean, you can't maneuver and get in and out of the cockpit with it um, very easily, so. Yeah, so let's uh, get this show on the road. I got the leading edge of the flag tape on the leading edge. And we went out and measured and how we want this to attach this to the rail is we're gonna fold it. This is gonna go over and snap. So the Dodger grab rail is gonna be inside right here. So I need to sew something here for the snap edge. So I have three inch shelter right, which I've cut in half. 
And <laughs> now she's going to poke a hole in it. And now I'm going to sew it three inches down because the grab bar is a one inch di diameter tube. So the circumference is times pi, which is 3.14 inches. We're just going to call it three. Check out the big brain on Jenny. I don't know if that's going to be right. And who told you that? I did the math. One times pi. <laughs> that's about the math level that I can do. So you're starting at the edge? I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out here, right? We measured it from here. Yeah. Are you going to have enough or is it going to overlap in the middle? Mm. I was thinking if you start at the middle and work your way out to both I was, edges. I'm just going to. Okay. Cut it. It should be. This is, should, this is half. You measured, right? 54 inches. I did, but you're starting at the end, and those ends are wild, and they're going to get cut I off. I know, but it's just how it has to be, because this is the way the fabric... Otherwise, I have to turn the fabric around, and all of it will be under here. Yeah, okay. You see how that yeah, works? Yeah, yeah, I understand. There's set-up procedures. I won't need this. So we put snaps in, so it just snaps over the grab bar in the Dodger. And Jenny's just back here trying to figure out what we need to do. I'm gonna do this. Yeah, so. I mean, it's really just for sitting under, not for standing under. Yeah, it's definitely not for doing any work, but sitting is what we do a lot of these days. It's hideous. It's hideous? Well, I just don't think it's, it has a very tasteful aesthetic to it, but it works. Good to know. What? I don't think you're tasteful or aesthetically pleasing either. So our friends on Scout just oh, yeah. moseyed into the anchorage while we were uh, messing about with this uh, shade tarp. Did we talk about? I think we did. We were going to go to El, uh, El Gato. We talked, I think, in the previous video. I think you might have mentioned yeah. it. Yeah. We were going to go to an anchorage called El Gato on the Baja side, um, south of here, before Agua Verde. And we were in San Evaristo when Bianca sent us a message saying, hey, there's four Mexican guys on a panga that tried to board a boat in El Gato, and it was on Facebook, one of the Facebook groups. So Asking anyway, for money and gas and kind yeah, of strong arm kind tactics. Of being aggressive. Yeah. So anyway, we didn't go there because of that. We skipped it and went up to Agua Verde instead. And it was pretty disappointing. I really wanted to go there. But um, anyway, we just were sitting here in Bahia Salina, yeah. and Scout just came in from... Ensenada, and when we met them in Ensenada, and um, they were the ones in El Gato that got boarded, so we got the first-hand scoop from them. Yeah, saw the boat about a mile out, looking at them through binoculars, and I'm like, man, that boat looks familiar. Yeah, that's... I think I've seen it in another anchorage. Um, yeah, you were like a little child. Scouts here, scouts here. I don't know about that. Mm, I do. <laughs> And I turned the radio on, and two seconds later, Rich was calling him. Our friends on Scout. This is kind of what we ended up with. It's not as dark as I would like, but it's what they had. It's definitely cooler. I mean... It takes the edge off, for sure. It does take the edge off. It's pretty it's... easy to put up, too, I think. You know, it's... Uh... 80 degrees right now in the Sea of Cortez, so we'll see what it's like when it's 110. It's not going to be enough. <sighs> oh, we're spitballing here. Yeah, this is a um, five-hour project? Four-hour project? Something like that. It started at like 11, I don't think. I mean, the boat's a mess. It's all torn apart. Yeah, and then how do you get in and out? Just slide it up over the... Slide it up the pole. Nice. There you go. You can put the seat down. So now we can hang out in the cockpit naked. Yes, you can. <laughs> that gray stuff is a lot darker. Something. I mean, it's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot tighter weave, so mm -hmm. it blocks the sunlight. Yeah. Well, we could uh, 
since the sun's over here, we could double it up and just have it just flip that side over and uh, just let it drape. Yeah, try it. Right. Is... Well, that's always an option. As long as it's not windy. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely darker. Well, yeah, it's twice as dark. It's one louder. Well, it's one louder, isn't it? We've been here for a couple of days. We're just not getting to shore. Yesterday, we pretty much sewed all day long. So, and then we went over to a friend's boat yesterday evening. Audio might not be as good today because we've lost the wind muffs for our mics. And I, they don't seem to be as good without them. So, they're actually way out there. I'm not sure where it is, but it's pretty far out. So there's some ruins here we're gonna go check out. I see somebody over there. Maybe it's a, there's supposed to be like a caretaker here. I think it's a hunting lodge. They hunt big run sheep and stuff here. We saw a plane fly over earlier, like a little plane. Like maybe it landed, I'm not sure. And there's like an old pier here where they used to load salt. I guess over this hill, there's a salt flat. So we've heard that they may not want us to walk around here. So we're gonna walk around until someone comes and kicks us out. Um, I do hear some work going on over here. There's like a backhoe or something, so. They're bracing some of the walls, the crumbling walls on the buildings. Yeah, we'll see what I they're see doing. see some fresh lumber. Oh! Look at all of them. Yeah. What are they? Are they cockroaches? They're moving too fast. There's something, there's some sort of isopod. Smell the like the the oil from the use of this area. You smell it? Yeah. It smells like an auto body shop or something, or an auto repair place. Here's the salt ponds out here. That's a turtle skeleton. Yeah, that's the shell. A little turtle. Maybe it was just old. Probably got entangled in garbage and washed ashore. Yeah, there's a lot of garbage here. Yeah. A lot of garbage. And then up there is like a hunting lodge or something. Really nice buildings. But I didn't really want to go up there. At Bahia Salina, there's a uh, sunken tuna boat or something. It's like a 120 foot long boat. And we are going to go out and look at it. Maybe I should have put on a wetsuit. Because it's too cold? Yeah. That'll be fine. It's only 30 feet deep. Why don't you just do a little circle around it and yeah. on the surface? And I don't know why. I'm just so... It's creepy. ...burst to getting in the water lately. Like... <laughs> 